It has been a while since we did one of these. You know, these videos where we look at a casting choice in a big Marvel or DC movie and review the character, talk about whether we think it was a good choice or not, what it tells us about the movie. It used to be that we would get a lot of them, like we're speculating a lot, and then we had a little bit of a dead zone, I would say, after January, but here we're back with a brand new one that I think is going to be pretty interesting. So we got our casting information about a certain member of the Fantastic Four's ally group, rogues gallery, whatever you want to call them, because, you know, traditionally, the Silver Surfer is both a villain in the very beginning of his story and then a hero pretty much uh, immediately after. Like for I'm, I'm 90, 95% of this character's existence, he's been a good guy. But it is not the he you would expect. Because as we covered in an earlier video, there were rumors going around that the Silver Surfer was going to be played by a woman. And it seemed like a uh, front runner at the time was Anya Taylor-Joy. Which I think looking at this now, uh, that seems like that was true. Maybe she just didn't want it. Uh, maybe she's busy, maybe she's gonna be magic again. I, at this point, I think she's too old to be magic, it's a shame. But we do have an actual actor cast for this role, and we have a little bit more information about what female Silver Surfer means. Because the Silver Surfer traditionally is Norrin Rad. The idea of a Herald of Galactus, a character who works for Galactus, helps the world eater find worlds to eat, uh, that has been a role that several characters have taken over, but when they take it over, they usually either get a brand new name or just have a name that's already what their name is. Like, now that I'm thinking about it, is Tyrax's name Tyrax? I just kind of assumed it was, but maybe it's not. But either way, the Silver Surfer was the first significant one of these in the comics, but he was not the only one that's ever technically been a Silver Surfer. The big one that came up when a lot of people were talking about the Anya Taylor-Joy option was Juno. Uh, you know, the Olympian character like Hercules did become a very Silver Surfer-like uh, herald for a while. So much so that a lot of the outlets talking about Anya Taylor-Joy potentially getting this role used Juno in the image because it was like, that's what a female Silver Surfer is, so I don't know, maybe her? And I did not even think of this possibility. Personally, I kind of thought we would get Norina Rad or something, or just Norin Rad was a, was a genderless name, but like I, I assumed that was what they were doing. We have learned one other thing, or one other thing has been rumored about the new Fantastic Four movie that I think is interesting, which is that it will take place in a different universe, and then by the end of the movie, we'll be back in the home universe. So it will be like, I don't know, Universe 615 or something, and the whole story will take place there, and then at the end, the Fantastic Four will be maybe sucked out of it, or like maybe earlier in the movie, they will be you know, thrown through the negative zone and come out in our universe. But either way, the Fantastic Four we are going to meet in the movie starring Pedro Pascal and Vanessa Kirby, all those characters, they are probably going to be from another universe, which changed things, right? Because now, if they're meeting a Silver Surfer in their movie, it does not need to be the Silver Surfer that is going to exist for the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because especially, you know, with some of the other cosmic characters being like retired or not being as involved anymore like the silver surfer should play a pretty large role in the mcu so you would want this character to be someone that's going to stick around and fans of the silver surfer and there are quite a few really like norrin rad so the idea of completely replacing that character with a different character it, it might leave some fans like upset i think there, i think there's some fans that would be like oh silver surfer's not supposed to be a woman but i think there's some other fans that would genuinely be like i thought the silver surfer was this other guy like it, i guess it would kind of be like if there was never a wolverine movie like wolverine was never in the marvel cinematic universe and they just started with laura i think there would be a lot of people that are sexist who are upset and then i think there'd be a lot of wolverine fans like hey wait a second this is that's not how this works but i think they've come up with maybe a elegant solution which is do this other version of the silver surfer in the universe of fantastic four from and then when they come to our universe they find a different silver surfer maybe that's just just an option but based on the idea that this is taking place in multiple universes and we're starting uh, with the silver surfer that is not traditionally what the silver surfer is uh that that seems possible now we did learn another thing about the silver surfer and this is stuff that i have written down because i didn't could not have told you the name of this character uh without this uh, helpful material so first of all the silver surfer norn rad is an alien i guess not an alien in terms of where he's from but he is a you know citizen of the planet zenla this is his planet i wouldn't say like it's it's you know one of the societies it's a very developed society in space as opposed to say you know sakar or something like that uh but as far as i know it doesn't have a ton of personality i've come i've kind of compared it to what krypton's kind of like um 
in the pre-fall days. You know what else it feels feels like to me? It's like Ran, the uh, planet that uh, Adam Strange is from. And uh, he's not from there because he's from Earth. But the planet that he goes on. Anyway, um, so Zenla, Nornrad, normal guy, has a girlfriend named Shala Ball. I assume I'm pronouncing that right. It's S-H-A-L-L-A-B-A-L. And this is a character, I believe, that has existed for the entirety of the Silver Surfer's existence. Like, because the Silver Surfer's whole story, or at least this character showed up in Silver Surfer 1 in 1968. But the story behind it is, he is in love with her, but to save his planet from Galactus, the world leader, he makes a deal with Galactus that he will become his herald as a Silver Surfer, and Norrin will go out into the galaxy and find planets for Galactus to eat instead of Zenla. But... Part of the issue is that he has to go do that then so he can't spend any time with his love or anybody on Zenla anymore. Now, we learned that Shala Ball is going to be the Silver Surfer. Um, We'll talk about who she's being played by in a second, but I don't think it matters because I don't think any of these characters, these versions I'm going to talk about are particularly well defined uh, characteristically, like it's not like someone like the Silver Surfer with a lot of history where you can say, like, This is what this should feel like. Like, you've got more of a blank slate than you know, casting the Fantastic Four. And we're talking about Shala Ball, but she's been a Silver Surfer from what I can tell three times. Well, okay, that's not true actually. She's been a Silver Surfer twice, she's been a Silver Surfer esque character three times. And I'll start with the simplest one in What If 37, she became Star Glow. And she was basically just Galactus's new herald. So she was not the Silver Surfer. Like, that is not her name. Uh, she, Like I said, she gets a new name. It's Starglow. But after Silver Surfer betrays Galactus, he gets left on Earth. And Galactus goes back to Zenla. And Shala Ball sees Galactus. She's like, oh, you took my boyfriend. What happened to him? And he's like, oh, yeah, he's stuck on Earth. He can't ever see you again. But also, if you want to save your planet, you could be a silver surfer for me now. And she does that. I do think one thing that's interesting about the relationship between these two characters in the comics just generally, because this is a what if, so this doesn't count. Um, But is that they're not, they're like star-crossed lovers in a very, you know, traditional sense. But like kind of like Kitty and uh, Peter, like Colossus, they have this relationship where every time one of them is like single or you know, available or back from the dead, the other one is dead or in a relationship or something. So like, they're never on the same frequency. It's the same problem there. Like whenever the Silver Surfer, Norin, is able to go back to Zen La, oh, Shala Ball's actually been stolen by Mephisto or something. Like, so it's, it's, it's somewhat tragic. And the Silver Surfer is a very like, you know, poetic figure, uh, I would say. Uh, very uh, philosophical. But okay, so that's the story, basically, the whole story. It's like she goes to become the new Herald. Silver Surfer uses uh, something from the Watcher. I mean, at this point, it's just Nornrad, but he borrows something from the Watcher that looks a lot like that thing that Orion flies around on in DC Comics, goes to uh, Zenla and finds his, you know, ex lover, betrothed, whatever, finds that she is now a Silver Surfer, but Galactus has wiped her memory. So she doesn't you know, recognize Norrin. And that's the story. Is that what I think they could do? I don't know, I guess. I don't think that's a particularly, A, I don't think you get the Silver Surfer thing, which I think is important. Like, I think she should have a surfboard, otherwise why bother? And then B, it's like, she only is interesting in that what if story. That, that, that relationship is only interesting because we know the story of the Silver Surfer. But if you're bringing this to an audience that's fresh and it's like, I don't know who this guy is. He seems important. But like everything she's doing only makes sense through through that lens. So I don't think that's going to be incredibly important. Second version of the Silver Surfer involving Shella Ball uh, is the Earth X version where I'm not going to get into the whole story, but basically uh, Galactus got taken out of commission and the universe needed a new Galactus. So they found one. I won't say who it is. If you ever want to read this, it's a fun book. Uh, That person. Uh, recognizes that they need a Silver Surfer character. So they grab Norrin, who is still, I think, at that point, the Silver Surfer, and take Shia LaBelle, and they're like, you can also be the Silver Surfer. We'll let both of you guys do Silver Surfer stuff. I think this is close as she's gotten to fully being the Silver Surfer. Because, like I said, she's the Herald of Galactus, but she is also, like, a silver person, rides on the surfboard, that whole thing. Uh, we don't get too much of her in that story from there on out, but that is a story where Shia LaBelle was the Silver Surfer. And I I would say probably the only one of those. And again, this is after a day of like reading up on this and also watching a bunch of stuff. So like I may have missed something, but these are the three that I can find that seem like the most 
uh, plausible just because she's not an incredibly consequential character. Like, obviously, she's important. But we compare this to, like, Jane Foster or something like that, one of the other girlfriends in comics. Like, it's a different amount of exposure. But the story that I think they'll probably crib from the most is the one that unfolds in Silver Surfer, I believe, Volume 8 from 2008 by Dan Slott with art by Mike Allred. So this story, it's part of two, like an arc that was split in half. So this isn't the first story that Dan Slott wrote about the Silver Surfer, but... Uh, this is the start of this run, and this is the part of the story that features Shala Ball. So from what I can tell, uh, this first book is a lot of it is about Silver Surfer meeting this uh, human named Dawn and forming a relationship with her. It's got a very fun tone uh, for a Silver Surfer book, the you know few that I've read. But he, he's a character that takes himself quite seriously, usually. Even when he's in a team book, which is probably what I know m from more stuff like Defenders, he's very zen and philosophical, like a, a monk or something like that, you know, contemplating the weight of the universe. Whereas in this, I think they try to humanize him a little bit. That's my sense from this story. But like I was saying, the beginning of that arc is not important for this bit. What's important is the second arc, which starts in the version from 2008, Silver Surfer, finds Earth getting attacked by a new villain or something uh, who's able to take over the mind of the thing and they seem very powerful and it is revealed that and we see this in flashbacks uh, it is Shala Ball who has the uh, wonderful technology of something called the Illuminatrix which is a machine that you can use to kind of reinvent a culture and what she is using it for, and what she, we find out she has been using it for for a while, is taking this big energy thing to other planets. And when it, it does a revolution around the sun, I believe, and it comes back, then all of your culture disappears and you get turned into Zenla, basically. So you look like people from Zenla, which is a very, you know, Jack Kirby, uh, New Gods kind of aesthetic, like uh, Eternals. It, I'm sure people are probably familiar with what characters like this look like. Uh, but also, like, your art is gone. They will cure diseases. It's one of those situations. She's basically like, you know, Viltrumite, basically. A less violent Viltrumite. But, like, the that's idea of, like, we're spreading our, you know, knowledge through the universe. And all you have to do is conform. You can become part of our empire. So she's a bad guy in this story. And, like, pretty consistently. Like, there, there's no redemption arc for her it's just kind of about understanding like she's like this is important the culture of zen law is important this is how we preserve it and a big player in this alicia masters like no that's not you know if you take away our culture you're taking away all the stuff that makes us who we are so we're not going to take that deal and they fight her now i think you could have an interesting story where like she comes to earth maybe working for galactus with something like the you know illuminatrix or something uh and uses that to do Galactus's bidding or something like that. Like, I don't know. I guess, like, for the beginning of the story, it's like, why her? Why this antagonist? What has she done in the comics that would make her a good threat to the Fantastic Four in this movie? Or even just, you know, threat-turned-ally. But, like, why, why have her do this? I think if the idea is she is this warrior who you know, steals your culture for Galactus or something like that. There's there's an angle there for a character that's interesting. And then the Fantastic Four could go back to Zen La and find Norrin Rad, who is just a person. Uh, maybe he's, you know, an army in this. And then when they go to the new universe, they find that Norrin Rad is the Silver Surfer. And this is a big deal for them. So like, oh, we know we know, kind of know you. We know her, but we're not going to tell you what happened. It wasn't great. You know, I think there's something there. I'm not positive this is what it is. Uh, but I do think that that version of Shalabal is the one that it seems like makes the most sense. If it's like, how, is, how are they going to be the antagonist in a movie like this? It could be that. It could be like they come to Earth with the Illuminatrix, use it to like weaken Earth's defenses uh, so that Galactus can, you know, take it over. Uh, we, we know so little about this story that I don't know, you know, what to expect. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if if that's what they're going for. Uh, the actor that they chose for this role is an actor named Julia Garner, who most people will remember from either the movie The Royal Hotel, just came out kind of recently. Apparently she was good in it. Uh, that miniseries Inventing Anna, where she played Anna Delvey, the weird, you know, fraudster who scammed her way into polite society. Or uh, most notably, she was in the show Ozark. She has been in there since the beginning. Uh, that's mostly where I know her from. I think she's good. You know, I think she's a solid actor. Uh, I don't, like, know too much about Shalabal. I don't know if she can do, like, you know, ethereal. 
But that's the thing. If she was playing Norrin Rad the Silver Surfer, I'd be like, oh, I don't know. I don't, I'm not saying that I don't think she could, but I'm saying I'd have to examine her roles a little bit more deeply to understand if she's right for that. But with Shala Ball, it's like, I don't know. I, I guess she is a human being, you know, around the age that this character maybe is in the comics. So sure. I think the most interesting thing this tells us is that if we get a Silver Surfer in the main like MCU when we get there played by Norrin Rad, I imagine they'll probably want someone who's about the same age as her. Not even so that like they can be friends, but just so that like to, to maintain some level of like parody. And maybe that character could be in the Fantastic Four. Like so you get that actor in both. Um, so that like I I'd wanted Keanu as the Silver Surfer. I just thought it would be interesting. Um, but now maybe you go younger. Overall, I think Julie Gardner is an interesting choice. I'm, I'm like the fact that it is Shala Ball is a development. Uh, it certainly tells us something about the movie, but yeah, we'll see. So I've been Nando. Uh, and if you like this video, watch all my other videos on my channel. That's all I got. See you later.